Hello, my name is Sarah Jo and I'm from So Shire. Today I'm presenting on an issue that we discovered through collecting citizen science data thanks to our local volunteers. So So Shire is the sustainable organisations of the Sutherland Shire and one of our campaigns is a plastic free Sutherland Shire. So we work with businesses and schools and, and the community to help them reduce their waste and to increase their sustainability. And one of the things that we do is cleanups. So we run large community cleanups, which are great for awareness and also smaller scientific data collecting cleanups, which actually came from these bigger cleanups because we started to notice some things that were happening at our local beaches. So it's about working on local source reduction plans. So we found some items that was, were, you know, specific to a particular location. So for example, we find lots of black straws at a particular beach, which is very much linked to the cafes that are serving those black straws at that near that beach. But also we started to see that there were some common items showing up at all of the sites that we went to, whether as for big cleanups or our smaller citizen science cleanups. So we started to look at balloons, so balloon debris. So counting how many bits of clips, ribbons, et cetera, because that's what we start to look at. But by looking for a balloon data, we actually discovered something else. We start to see lots of white stems or white sticks on all of our sites that we looked at. And they were quantities that were regular. So they were at all the sites or at particular sites, they're always in their tens or hundreds for some sites. And when there was a swell, some of these sites increased to up in their thousands. But what we found, um, they either came with high rain and swell or just swell only. When there was just rain, there was not an increase in number of these beyond the regular number that we found. So we started to look at these actual sticks. So some had indentations, some had fat, oil and grease deposits on them, and some we started to see bits and pieces of them. So we actually have to identify what these pieces were in the first place. So there are different types of sticks. You've got your lollipops, which generally have the one hole. You've got your cotton bud sticks, which um, generally have ridges at the end where the cotton goes on. And then there was other various other white sticks that we found. So for example, there were tags from um, marine or security tags, for example. And then we discovered lots of other things that we had to ID as well. And they helped us find out the source, so where these items are coming from. So helping to determine whether they were stormwater, litter, um, or from sewerage, or washed in as ocean debris. So there are another picture of some other items that we find. So some are dental picks, some are different types of lollipops, etc. So some things we found the definite source. So these particular little, um, little seals end up being from sunscreen spray bottles. So we determined, for example, that they are either litter from the actual person using the item at the beach, or they get washed from the streets or the park or their driveway after a bin has been empty from into stormwater, or they've been flushed down the toilet and end up coming out through our sewage system. And these are some of the items too that we've had to discover and learn where they may or may not have come from. So we've got some palm olive rings, they're little seals on palm olive bottles, little bin screws and plugs. So we've worked out there from when different councils change their bin lids. And so we've determined they've come through stormwater and end up on our beaches and other bits and pieces like um, sushi soy fish. Um, building wedges, plugs, silicon kind of uh, caps and tiling squares. Now, they're a bit harder because they could come from stormwater. They could come from sewerage if they filter through the filters. Usually, if they've got a bit of wear and tear on them, we think they've come through the sewerage if they fit. But most of them, we, they're either litter or through our stormwater. So we started looking at these numbers to determine where are these cotton tips coming from. So we call them PCBs, 
plastic cotton buds because we do ha now have cardboard variety. So these are the plastic sticks. And looking at the difference between how many were lollipops, how many were the PCBs and the pieces. And the pieces are important coming up. I'll explain to you in a minute. So back then, sorry, go back there. So you can see here, um, for example, a couple of examples, a latest one we've just counted this weekend from the 2nd of September, we had 1,230 individual cotton bud stems plus 425 pieces versus 209 lollipops and the 25 pieces of the lollipops. So where are they coming from and why? And these are a few things we had to look at. Who is flushing these down the toilet? Is that where they're coming from? And what are the reasons why we're seeing different numbers on different cleanup dates? So some examples of our locations are there. So there's four-wheel drive to different sites. So Boat Harbour four-wheel drive and Boat Harbour Bay. And another one here, which we call Cricket Pitch. So why I'm showing you these pictures is We've changed our sites over time. We used to do long, 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 long distances, but then we started noticing some different features in how many cotton buds were washing up or in pieces, for example. So we've actually split a few of these particular sites into two or three sites. And that's different things the way that the beach is actually facing, so currents, tides, all that sort of stuff is going to influence what is washing up and how many. So I won't go through them, but they're all our various sites. We've done over 100 cleanups, and that's not just me personally, but there's all different groups that we support and collect data from. We're going to concentrate today on some specific ones from Sutherland Shire because we've determined what we think is the source of them. There's different types of stormwater and sewerage assets across New South Wales, and this is also a national and international issue. So Western Australia, Victoria also have this issue of lots of cotton buds washing up on their shores. But today I'm going to talk about our personal data. So obviously we need to sort and count after we've identified what all the items are. And you can see some of our tallies there. So you can see some days there's a few and then other days there are heaps. Now we find lots of them at ocean sites and little less at estuary sites. We find a high number near our local outfall and also the beaches near this outfall. And we've also found a fair amount at Burning Palm site, which is down in national parks, which I won't concentrate too much on that today. But basically with that, that's a bit of a one we're still just working out on because two out of the three wastewater treatment plants only run when there's wet weather. And the main one, the Shell Harbour one, which you think is the closest one, is a primary treatment. And we're not too sure if they have overflows, if currents are pushing the buds towards the National Park there, or if the National Park is actually getting their buds washed up from the other sewerage systems in Sydney, for example, Malabar, Cronulla, et cetera. All right, so here is a quick just a map of showing you of the two wastewater treatment plants that are relevant to Sutherland Shire and the outfall. So in Sutherland Shire, our outfall is directly off the cliff and at Malabar, it's actually an ocean outfall. So it goes about three kilometres out to sea. Now, these particular wastewater treatment plants have filters, so physical filters. And the one closest to us, so which is the Potter Point, has six millimetre screen step filters. So cotton buds, which are about, you know, max three millimetres in diameter, can get through these particular step filters. Now, Cronulla, so I call it Cronulla, but it's actually Potter Point, it actually is a tertiary treatment plant which means it also goes through secondary and tertiary treatment, but that is biological and chemical treatment. And so what we're pretty sure is happening is that the only physical treatment for these plastic items is that primary treatment. So that means 
whether it's tertiary or primary, these buds are getting through. And 90% of Sydney's sewerage is actually only primary treated. So even if a tertiary system or a further system was filtrating, filtering them out, 90% of Sydney water and on wet weather, so when they need overflows or um, other of their wastewater treatment plants to run in around the Sydney area, it actually is more than 90% is only primary treated. So I'm not going to go too much into this information because um, you can access our report that has a lot of this information. But you can see that here, for example, at Cronulla, we, there's about 53 megalitres a day. So what we want to know is, are the numbers that we get during a swell period, which are up in their thousands, is that actually how much is regularly being flushed out to sea? So is that many cotton buds are being washed out to sea every day? And we only see them in their thousands because the swells brought them in. They're not being lost out to sea. Or is there something else happening? So because remember, we always find at least 10, 20, 30 of these cotton buds at these regular sites every cleanup. And then after swell, we get hundreds and thousands. So this is an image of Potter Point. So this is where our Cronulla wastewater treatment sewage water exits. So here is a bit of a graph about what we're talking about, trying to link up the swells and, and increase in numbers. But as you can see from the table, for example, um, on 31st of the 1st this year, you know, there's still 27 washed up at Voodoo which is the um, Potter Point. Okay, so what is our physical evidence? So we started looking at these actual bits and sticks that we're, we're picking up, and we started to see some features. So six millimetre ridges or indentations on the sticks, fat oil and grease deposits, and actually bits. So there's obviously there's longer bits here, but there's actually six millimetre and five millimetre bits that we're washing up and we start to notice. So you can see in this image, this is a really good image to see what we're talking about those gaps. So what's happening there is when the cotton buds fall across the filter, they're being mechanically cut like this. So if they fall through, they fall through. If they fall across, they're getting cut, but then still falling through or they've been cut into these smaller six millimetre pieces. Now, um, another, I think, North Head wastewater treatment, their filters are about five millimetres, I think. So there are different types of pieces and different things happening at different wastewater treatment plants. So this fat, oil and grease deposits, this is indication that these buds have been sitting in the system somewhere. So either in the pipes on the way to the sewage system. And then we also find ones with cotton still on them. So they could be litter or they could be from overflows or they could actually have passed through the system as well. But we kind of think with the chemical and the biological treatment, the cotton usually gets, um, is, is gone. And so that's why most of the things we find are without the cotton. So just to finish up, so I don't go over time, what are the three main things that we know can solve this? So obviously public education, we cannot believe how many that we find, which tells us Sydney residents are using the toilet as a bin. These items aren't coming from overseas. They are coming from our local New South Wales Sydney sewerage systems. So that tells us there are a lot of people using the toilet as a bin. Legislation, so to ban that these particular items be made out of plastic in the first place. There are plenty of alternatives on the market from reusable silicon to compostable, home compostable bamboo cardboard versions. And then thirdly, infrastructure. So it's 2021 and that we have this many cotton buds being flushed out to this ocean. Imagine what else is being flushed out that's less than six millimetres. So we truly believe that obviously we need advanced filtration, so definitely less than two millimetres. 
but also upgrading our systems because we need to think about filtration all the way from the home. So what's happening in our washing machines, for example, our particular drains, but also the system in general, the assets in general, we should be recycling water. We flush out to sea amount of water every day that Sydney needs. So we should really be looking at recycling water. And if they're recycling the water, then we obviously need a, need better filtration. So that includes things like reverse osmosis, all that sort of stuff to actually get rid of the plastics out of the water. So to finish up today, these are some of the solutions I was talking about. There's plenty of reusable and non-plastic versions on the market, but that's just the buds. So there are plenty of other plastic items that are being flushed down our toilets and getting through our sewage systems. So in the Q&A today, I will put a link to our first report. We have a campaign launching next month in time for our second report, which has all the data from the last six months because we've had plenty of other um, data to add. But also it'd be really good for you to look into Better Buds and also Clean Ocean Foundation because they provide a lot of information about what is happening to our sewage systems across Australia. And please obviously remember too, this is about our local data that we've collected, but this is happening in Western Australia, down in Victoria. So we really need to look at those three things, education, banning these items, and also improving our sewage and stormwater infrastructure. So thanks very much.